Hello, I'm continuing the build of this diatone number 37 frame that was so rudely interrupted by the couple of magic smoke incidents last time. Uh, so the part that I was waiting on was this ESC here, so I got that and I flashed it with the Simon K 2013 May 15 to match the other ESCs. I'm not sure what firmware is on here already, maybe it is that one to begin with, but just to be sure I flashed it myself anyway. Um, so I'm going to use that. Um, and I'm going to rearrange the wiring here. Somebody reminded me about the um, magnetic field set up by this this wiring here. Um, that's one one reason I wanted to use this to see how that would affect the uh, the compass because it should be theoretically I think it should be a little bit better for magnetic interference being two sheets on top of each other rather than wires running side to side by side. Uh, anyway, so. Instead of using this board, I'm going to take that off and I have a lot of this uh, 16 gauge silicon wire sitting around so I thought I might make my own little wiring harness and I found that this wire fits down in between the two bottom plates here quite easily like that. So I'm going to try and fit the wiring or the power distribution board wiring loom uh, entirely inside there so that will give me a little bit more space here as well uh, so the the wiring will come to the motors out this side here it'll just pop out there and connect onto the ESCs there uh, so to do that I was thinking about how I was going to lay it out because I don't want to have <coughs> I don't want to have the negative and the positive on each side of the the compass because that'll make things even worse so the design sort of requires that both sides of the wire go on the same side of the flight controller board like this and generally I thought it might be a good idea to cut down on these crossover points because uh, the frame the space between these two boards is not not thick enough to allow for the wires to cross over. However, there are a bunch of spaces like that. So if you made sure that the crossing over point was in one of these open areas, then it would poke up a little bit, but it, would, <coughs> it wouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to try and put these crossover points in those gaps. And if I wanted to um, flip one of the ESCs around, I could reduce the crossover point so there'd be just one and two, in fact only two, yeah. Um, but in the interests of cutting down the magnetic field it's actually better to have the wire crossing over itself as much as you can. So I'm gonna have it so that there's one, two, three crossovers there like that and that will also let me keep the ESCs all facing up this way so that I can have the solder points on the top instead of having to turn them down uh, and that'll let me access the solder points easily and it also means that the heat sink is on top instead of being on the bottom. So that's uh, how that's going to work. Um, and this, uh, these aluminium standoffs here, I've got to say I really really don't like these. Um, you hardly have to put any strength into turning these screws at all to just strip the thread out of them and make them almost useless. But what I did discover is that instead of using um, these little small screws that came with it, they're about 8 millimeters long I think. Instead of using those I tried using some of these that I had sitting around. This is a 20 millimeter I think and just as a test I put one in here and now I can't get it out. Um, well I haven't really tried too hard but I guess if I grabbed hold of a, the butt spacer with a pair of pliers and tried really hard I could get it out. But um, the reason it's stuck in so hard is because it goes past the area where the threading was so it's actually self-tapping itself into the aluminium as it goes. Um, so I'm going to try using these instead and hopefully it'll give me a really really solid um, connection between the two plates. Perhaps a connection that I can't easily dismantle but that's okay. So that's um, what's going to happen here. Um, I was going to use this little mini 
spec that I made for my other quadcopter and just fit it on there somewhere. It's nice and small because for my other quad I'd cut the power leads off the BECs coming from the ESCs there. But now that I've got this new ESC that has the uh, the 5 volt power there not cut, I think I might just use this for the power for the flight controller, make things easier. Um, and in the meantime, while I was waiting for that ESC to arrive, one of my other orders that was coming in the mail from Banggood was this motor here. So this is a counterclockwise motor. So yes, I <laughs> I tried my luck again with these motors, and this time it was not a fake. So I was quite happy with that. So now I have two counterclockwise and two clockwise motors so that the uh, prop fastener things are not going to be falling off in midair or untightening themselves. Anyway, uh, let me get on with it. Okay, that's what it's going to look like. Um, battery there. I haven't soldered anything in, in yet. It's just poked in there so I can sort of get a look at it. I think this is going to be pretty bad for the compass, to be honest. But um, let's just confirm that it's, it is actually bad before we try and fix anything. Um, so the front is like that. And there's just a few crossover points there. Um, I haven't put any power connection for the video transmitter on here yet. I think I might just do a few flights without that and then come back and maybe splice it onto the main battery connections there. And that's what it looks like once it's in its final position. Boy, it was a mission to get it in there though. Almost need five pairs of hands to hold everything at the same time. Uh, but now that it's in there, it's quite nice and tidy. It's uh, about five millimeters in total, I guess. Um, and from the bottom, we can see that in the middle section here, actually from this angle, we can't really see the wires there, but they are going along, both of them are going along the side there like that. I'm going to try putting some heat shrink around the motors and the arms together to uh, cover these bare solder points and hold the ESCs on there properly. Of course to get the heat shrink on I'm going to have to take the arm off <laughs> and then put the heat shrink on like that and solder it and then put them but put the heat shrink over. And that's what that turns out like. If we can focus, there we go. So it just tidies everything up quite nicely. In the bottom like that. Just one thing I thought I'd mention at this point, if you're doing what I've done and cut away the ground and the positive voltage wires on the ESCs quite short like that because I only, I only want to use the signal wire here, um, I guess another problem that you might have with a carbon fiber frame is that those wires there, if you can see them, the brown and the red just underneath the cap, um, it's possible that they might touch onto the carbon fiber or onto that nut there. So what I've done with those is cut them back even shorter or just simply um, made sure that they are well under like this. Uh, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> not going to do it right now but just make sure it's um, it's not going to touch on the frame is the main thing there we go so you could sort of shove them back like that and then bring the cap because the cap can bend a little bit so that might be enough to make sure they're not going to touch on the frame but for the positive voltage one I'm going to cut that back way shorter again just to be safe so that's what it looks like at this point. It's quite nice and tidy. Uh, the ESCs are stuck on there very securely and the solder points are all now protected. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. It took quite a while to get it done, but uh, it's turned out pretty nicely. Um, so all of the wiring is within about uh, six, six millimeters of thickness or so. And I also like the fact that now there's nothing at all on top of this plate at the moment. So if we look down on 
the top of the main plate there we can see that there's absolutely nothing so there's plenty of space to put all the bits and pieces that are going to, going to go on there I did a little bit more checking of these yes back to talking about these again and I found that the first time that I tried it screwing one of these longer screws in there I think I just got lucky because when I tried it on a few more of them I just couldn't get it to screw in even though I was holding it really tightly with pliers and screwing as hard as I could I just couldn't get it to go in very far at all so what I've decided to do was um, forget about this size of screw and I just drilled right through it with a three, three millimeter drill and now I've got some 45 millimeter long three millimeter screws and I'm just gonna slide them through from one side to the other so this will make the overall weight of the quad a little bit heavier but it should put to rest all these annoying problems that <laughs> these standoffs have been causing for me so far I'm just doing a quick check to see how much the uh, motors spinning up affect the magnetometer and it looks fairly good at this point although of course without any load like there's no props on and it's not actually lifting any weight uh, there'll be much less current than there will be um, when you're really flying but just as a quick test I thought I'd try this and we can see at the moment the heading is 79 degrees just over there and you can see this is uh, attached um, running okay it's 80, 82 degrees now and when I spin this up to full throttle on a 2S battery it goes to 81 degrees so like I say this is not really a true um, test of how it's going to be while it's flying but I think for now it's a good sign that the wiring is not affecting things too much on this particular flight controller board that I have the barometer is on the bottom there and these are quite sensitive to sunlight and wind apparently so I thought I'd make a little protective covering for it to keep the sunlight and the wind out and I found that it's very very shallow it's barely even a millimeter in height so I thought what I might try and do is keep everything very low profile and just cut a small cavity out of one side of this 2.5 millimeter plywood and stick it directly to the flight controller like that uh, leaving a little hole at one end of course so that the air can actually get in and hopefully not gluing up the barometer holes in the process um, and then inside the hole there I'm gonna put some of this stuff obviously I didn't need quite that much but that was the smallest <coughs> thing I could find and this is like cotton ball material uh, if you pull it apart like that uh, so I'll just poke a little bit of that in the doorway and I think it'll be just perfect because it says delicate in a hard no katai. And you're such a delicate little thing, aren't you? Yes, it will make a nice little house for you. No. All right, um, so let me just do that. Well, speaking of delicate, that was a pretty delicate job. Um, it's only 9 by 14 millimeters in size and I'm sort of grinding it down with the Dremel until I've removed everything except for the outer skin of the plywood on the back face um, so yeah that was pretty finicky little work there but I think it's it's turned out alright Uh, you may have been wondering why I put this other piece of wood here that's just to give it a little bit of balance so that when you're like pushing down on it oops if you're holding it down like that it doesn't rock and wobble like that don't you hate it when you go to a restaurant and you get a table that has a wobble in it yeah that's to prevent that kind of thing um, and the plywood as I mentioned is 2.5 millimeters in height so it is actually slightly higher than most of those pins there uh, but I don't trust it to keep it away from the carbon fiber so I'm still going to use this little fiberglass um, plate that I had before that's only about half a millimeter thick so it's not going to waste too much space okay I have the flight controller attached now it's looking 
fairly nice and tidy because it occurred to me that since the wiring under here is avoiding the central section under the flight controller there's actually a fair bit of space between these two plates there so what I did was I managed to thread the ESC signal wires kind of in and out of the um, bottom part of the space in between the two plates and then for the ESC signal wires from the front they just go underneath the flight controller and pop up the back there and the slack I just took up the slack and the ones that were t a little bit too long and just sort of poked them on there so that they don't jiggle around and they don't poke out so everything is nice and flat inside there and looks uh, quite tidy I think um, should we talk about these spaces a bit more yeah okay um, it occurred to me that now that I'm using a regular screw and a nut I can actually use lock tight uh, I mean um, nylock nuts on here to keep everything super snug and tight so that's a plus the downside is of course that in a few places on here the nut is going to be competing for space with the wires that I've put right next to the uh, holes but I think we'll we'll work around that okay pop quiz which one of these motors is brand new and which has been used and abused for six months or so Well, that was the uh, official maiden flight, I guess. It was a little bit wobbly, but I think that could be just because I haven't put the top uh, plate on yet. So there's a bit of um, there's a bit of flex. Maybe you can see it there. So it's actually still a little, a little bit flexible in this state. And I also haven't set the um, mixing to this shape because it's not a perfect square. So I'll, I'll do that now. It turns out that calculating the mixing for a rectangular arrangement is very simple uh, you just need to know the ratio of the distance side to side and back to front uh, so side to side is 192 millimeters there and back to front is 168 and it's almost not really worth creating this thing that I created but um, I set this up so I'll put a link to it a link in the description to this just in case it is handy for anyone else but you just put in those two distances that I measured there and it will give you the commands that you need to put into the clean flight um, oh, this is for clean flight of course or base flight maybe as well I don't know um, so these are the commands that you'll need to put into the command line inter interface and I got this information from these two links here so I'll link to those and some basic info there as well um, so this it just has a little bit of um, formula in the sheet so that if the values were the other way around where the front to back distance is actually longer than the side to side distance like that it would just switch those values over for you um, yeah anyway so to use that you could just copy in that section there and paste it into a text editor and then each one of these lines here you would need to copy that into the command line interface and you also need to do this as well so you need to do mix a custom to say that you want to use custom mix settings so I'm going to do that custom mix a set to custom and then I'll just paste in those four lines oh ID throttle or picture what did I do 
Maybe throw rope at you. Um, maybe these tabs are getting things a bit confused. Let's try that. Okay. Oh well. <laughs> I guess you'll have to also remove the tabs between these before you use them. So let's try that. Oh, and there's a sanity check there. Um, and I think that means that unless you've got everything working sensibly, it's not going to let you use it. And I think what it does is it checks that all of these numbers add up to zero, which is how they should be, if everything's going to be balanced. So that's motor three. What? Oh. <laughs> again all right and then it's kind of a bummer that the tabs get put in there isn't it otherwise it would just be almost copy and paste all the way all right so now we've got sanity check okay 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 uh, so I think we're good to go and then of course you have to do save and then it will reboot and I found that this uh, receiver doesn't actually fit where I wanted to put it because the box is too wide to fit in between the standoffs there. However, if I took the box off, it's just going to fit between the pillars like that. So I think I'll do that and I'll just heat shrink it up and um, save myself some space. So I'm going to put the receiver up there underneath the upper plate at the front so that I can have some uh, insect-like antennas out the front like that. And it, um, I found that once I put the heat shrink on, it was once again too narrow, uh, too fat to fit between these posts. However, the heat shrink is slightly soft, so I was able to jam it in there and it was, probably would stay in there quite well just like that, but I put a, a zip tie around it just in case, just to be safe. Okay, well that's as far as I'm going to take it at the moment. I want to do a little bit of outdoors flight testing before I stick the video transmitter and the GPS on uh, but it was raining today and the weather forecast says it's going to be raining tomorrow as well so not sure exactly when I'll be able to do that um, the antennas up here by the way I just stuck those on temporarily um, just with a little bit of rubber band to make sure that they're not falling down onto the propellers uh, I don't think that's a very good long-term solution because I've noticed that rubber bands tend to decay in sunlight fairly rapidly um, but I have seen plenty of good ideas on YouTube for how to arrange these antennas so I'll probably end up doing uh, one of the ideas that I've seen um, so yeah it's uh, weighs 350 a little over 350 grams as I was flying it just before with this 2s 1300 milliamp hour battery so it's still still plenty of leeway for weight and still plenty of leeway for space as well because you can see that the front area is almost almost completely empty there's just the thin part of the receiver at the top there so I'm gonna put the GPS there I think uh, remains to be seen how much the GPS will be uh, hindered by having this on top of it but I don't think it should be too bad and then at the back in this other empty section I'm gonna put the video transmitter there Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.